नाकसीत कर तुम अरहरी translation that which pervades the entire body you should know to be indestructible no one is able to destroy that imperishable soul oh i think we are purport this verse more clearly explains the real nature of the soul which is spread all over the body anyone can understand what is spread all over the body it is consciousness everyone is conscious of the pains and pleasures of the body in part as or as a whole this spreading of consciousness is limited within one's own body the pains and pleasures of one body are unknown to another therefore each and every body is the embodiment of a individual soul and the symptom of the soul's presence is perceived as individual consciousness this soul is described as One ten thousand part of the upper portion of the hair point in size. The Swetashtvara Upanishad confirms this. Balagrastata bhagyesha satada kalpitasya cha bagoji vasva vignya ha. Kalpate, when the upper point of the hair is divided into hundred parts, and again each of such parts is further divided into hundred parts, each such measurement is the measurement of the dimension of the spirit soul. Similarly, the same version is stated: Keshagraha sata bhagya shya sata masya sadrashat makaha jiva sushak sukshma swarupo yam. There are innumerable particles of spiritual atoms which are measured as one ten thousand of the upper portion of the air. Therefore, the individual particle of spirit soul is a spiritual atom smaller than the material atoms, and such atoms are innumerable. This very small spiritual spark is the basic principle of the material body. and the influence of such a spiritual spark is spread all over the body as the influence of the active principle of some medicine spreads throughout the body this current of the spirit soul is felt all over the body as consciousness and that is the proof of the presence of the soul any layman can understand that the material body minus consciousness is a dead body and this consciousness cannot be revived in the body by any means of material administration therefore consciousness is not due to any amount of material combination but to the spirit soul in the mukunta upanishad the measurement of atomic spirit soul is further explained the soul is atomic in size and can be perceived by perfect intelligence this atomic soul is floating in the five kinds of hair prana apana vyana samana udana is situated within the heart and it spreads its influence all over the body of the embodied living entities when the soul is purified from the contamination of the five kinds of material air its spiritual influence is exhibited the hatha yoga system is meant for controlling the five kinds of air encircling the pure soul by different kinds of sitting postures not for any material profit but for the liberation of the minute soul from the entanglement of the material atmosphere so the constitution of the atomic soul is admitted in all vedic literatures and is actually felt in practical experience of any sane man only the sane man can think of this atomic soul as all pervading vishnu tatva the influence of the atomic soul can be spread all over your body according to mukunta upanishad this atomic soul is situated in the heart of every living entity and because the measurement of the atomic soul is behind the power of appreciation of the material scientists some of them assert foolishly that there is no soul the individual atomic soul is definitely there in the heart along with the super soul and thus all the energies of the bodily movement are emanating from this part of the body the cord cells which carry the oxygen from the lungs gather energy from the soul when the soul passes away from this position the activity of the blood generating fusion ceases medical science accepts the importance of red corpuscles 
but it cannot ascertain the source of the energy is the soul medical science however admit that heart is the seat of all energies of the body such atomic particles of the spirit soul are compared to the sunshine molecules in the sunshine there are innumerable radiant molecules similarly the fragmental parts of the supreme lord are atomic sparks of the rays of the supreme lord called by the name prabha or superior energy so whether one follows vedic knowledge or modern science one cannot deny the existence of the spirit soul in the body and the science of the soul is explicitly described in bhagavad gita by the personality of god himself okay so this is you can see it's quite a detailed purport here shrila prabhupada has given with a lot of uh, some medical knowledge here because materialists they argue that there's no soul in the body so prabhupada is explaining that where does the energy come from where does the energy come from for the to make the heart beat and to circulate the blood there has to be some source of that energy and shrila prabhupada is establishing that that source of the energy is coming from the soul so materialists including medical scientists they do not often accept the existence of the soul and they simply see the body as material so when shrila prabhupada was in america he was invited to the massachusetts institute of technology and he asked the people there what is the difference between the living body and the dead body so none of them could give a satisfactory explanation because they don't have information of the soul so this is a major factor in presenting krishna consciousness to get people to understand that there are not there's not just simply the one energy but there's the spiritual energy as well as the material energy without the soul in the body there's no energy there's no life in the body and the symptom of life is consciousness it is consciousness which is spread all over the body just like the sunlight is spread all over by the presence of the sun so the same way that one living particle living uh, force within the body the soul spreads this energy through the body in the form of consciousness so we're trying to present this kind of information to people to help them to understand they if we, if we want them to understand krishna first of all they have to understand who who they are if they don't know who they are they'll never understand krishna so we have to teach them about, about the soul it's, it's very important that's why we see here in the bhagavad gita that now krishna is beginning his teaching the first thing he is teaching is about the soul to understand the soul because if we if we if we don't understand the soul then we will never understand krishna so it's very basic principle accepting that there is such a thing as spiritual energy and that spiritual energy is there within the soul the soul is the source of the spiritual energy are there any questions on this purport uh, yes guru maharaj uh, yes yes Prabhu. it's possible uh, that another soul occupies the place uh, of soul in the vatican where is a section uh, where the deals with exorcism
No, I'm right, Guru Maharaj. I'm right. Ah, uh, yes, Prabhu. Please write, Prabhu. We couldn't understand the very clearly. Yeah. What What's the question, Vaishnavi? Ah, uh, Guru Maharaj, I have asked him to repeat the write the question because uh, he has some language problem. I couldn't either understand what he is question. So he is writing in the chat now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Ah. Uh, Maharaj, uh, like, yeah, he has told his question is, it is, is it possible that another soul occupies the place of soul? Uh, yeah, like that. Well, in within, the the, sense, within, yeah, one, with, within one body, there may be more souls. For example, within our own body, there may be other living entities living in there. You know, <laughs> just like... There are viruses, there are just different germs and so on. Sometimes you get things like intestinal worms. You get these kind of things living in the body. So they also have souls. And so they're also, they can also be there within the body. So certainly there can be more than one soul in the body. But the soul which has possession of the human body, the soul which is uh, in the heart, seated in the heart, is going to be one soul. Now you may change the heart, the heart can change, but you can't change the soul. Medical science, they, they have gone to the extent that they're able to change the organs and they can also change the heart. We know about heart transplants. So they can do that, but it's the same soul. I gave the example the last time about how you change the seat in a car. So you, you take one seat out of a car, you may put a new seat in the car. It's the same car and the same driver, but you change the seat. So the, the heart is like the seat, but the driver is the organ that the driver is the soul, rather. So, it's not that you can change the soul. You can't transplant the soul. When the soul leaves the body, then that's when the body becomes the dead body. Because there's no soul, there's no consciousness anymore in the body. So then it's considered the dead body. Hmm. Has this question come up on the chat yet? Yes, Guru Maharaj, he is, he, it is, he is asking, is it possible the soul is found in the pineal gland? Is it possible the soul is found where? In the pineal, pineal gland. gland. In the what? Pineal gland. Uh, there is a gland, P-I-N-E-A-L. Oh, that... Well, it's possible. I mean, souls, so, uh, other living entities, different germs, bacteria, they could be there, but they're not the actual soul which is giving the life to the body. That they're limited to their own existence. Although they may be living within the body, they're not really part of the body. The, the, the dominant soul is the soul which is in the heart, because it's from the heart where all the energy is coming from. So there may be other souls in other parts of the body, but they're not giving the life to the body. Is that understood? Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Hmm.
Okay, if there are no more questions, we, we can go on. Yes, sir. 2.18 Antavanta ime deha nitto shokta sharirina anashi no ho prameyasa tasmad yudasya bharata Translation the material body of the indestructible, immeasurable, and eternal living entity is sure to come to an end. Therefore, fight. The material body is perishable by nature. It may perish immediately or it may do so after a hundred years. It is a question of time only. There is no chance of maintaining it indefinitely. But the spirit soul is so minute that it cannot even be seen by an enemy, to say nothing of being killed. As mentioned in the previous verse, it is so small that no one can have any idea how to measure its dimension. So from both viewpoints in the previous, uh, there is no cause of lamentation because all living entity as he is, as he is cannot be killed nor can be made or can the material body be saved for any length of time or permanently protected? The minute particle of the whole spirit acquires this material body according to his work and therefore ob observance of religious principles should be utilized. In the Vedanta Sutras, the living entity is qualified as light because he is parcel his part and parcel of the supreme light. As sunlight maintains the entire universe, so the light of the soul maintains the material body. As soon as the spirit soul is out of the material body, the body begins to decompose. Therefore, it is the spirit soul which maintains this body. The body itself is unimportant. Arjuna was advised to fight and not sacrifice the cause of religion for material bodily considerations. Mm. Okay, so this is a fundamental principle of matter, the material body, that it's sure to come to an end. Just like we, we sometimes say, Death is certain, as sure as death, and death is certain. So it's the nature of the material body that it's going to be destroyed. But the soul itself is indestructible. That is eternal. So often we see people in ignorance about this principle and they are trying so hard to save the body without understanding that the nature of the body is such that it has to die one day. We have to accept that. We cannot avoid that. So our real purpose in life is not just to live, try to live here forever, but to try to get free from birth and death. The real issue is how to get out of this wheel of birth and death. Because we're taking birth and dying again and again, we should understand this is not the proper situation to be in. We should want to get free from this, to get out of this kind of situation. Otherwise, we simply remain. So Krishna is encouraging Arjuna anyway, that, uh, you know, you don't have to worry about killing them because they're going to die anyway. <laughs> they're going to die because their bodies are material. We all have material bodies. We're all going to have to die one day. Question is, are we ready? Are we ready to die? Are we ready? Have you made the best use of this human life? Well, we have the human form of life. We have to take advantage of the opportunity to try to 
become Krishna conscious. Don't waste our life, don't waste our time. But use the time in the, in the best possible way for the service of Krishna. Otherwise you don't know, we don't know when we'll get the chance again. Maybe a long time before we come back to the human body again. So it's, it's a very special opportunity. Mm. So Krishna is advising Arjuna fight. Don't sacrifice the cause of religion <laughs> for material consideration. We're always thinking about the material. We have to think about the spiritual. Don't be caught up in the material things all the time. Understand the, the spiritual nature of life and how to properly utilize the spiritual life. Go ahead. 19? Yes. 2.19 So I read if you want. Yes. Ya yes. enam veti antaram yash chainam manyate hatam abau tau na vijanito nayam hanti na hanyate Neither he who thinks the living entity the slayer nor he who thinks it slain is in knowledge for the self slays not nor is slain pure port when an embodied living entity is hurt by fatal weapons it is not to be known it is to be known that the living entity within the body is not killed the spirit soul is so small that it is impossible to kill him by any material weapon as will be evident from subsequent verses. Nor in this, nor is the living entity killable because of his spiritual constitution. What is killed or is supposed to be killed is a body only. This, however, does not at all encourage killing the body. The Vedic injunction is ma himsyat sarva butani. Never commit violence to anyone, nor those understanding that the living entity is not killed encourage animal slaughter. Killing the body of anybody, of anyone without authority is ab abominable and is punishable by the law of the state as well as by the law of the Lord. Arjuna, however, is being engaged in killing for the principle of religion and not whimsically. So we can see Lord Krishna speaking to Arjuna again, enforcing the point that we're not the body. One who thinks the living entity, the slayer, the one who kills, not he thinks that he's slain, is in knowledge. The self slays not, nor is slain. So who is that? Krishna is bringing up the point that actually it's not the soul which is the doer, but it's the body which is the doer. It's the body which is killed. The soul is not killed. The soul cannot be killed because the soul is, materi is not material. The soul is spiritual. But the body, that's going to die one day anyway. It's the body only. So Prabhupada warns, he said, don't think that this means you can kill animals. People may say, oh, I'm, I'm not killing anybody because the animals are also souls. I'm only killing their bodies. But no, the principle is 
that we have to respect all forms of life. So violence itself is avoided wherever possible. But in this situation at Kurukshetra, Arjuna and the Pandavas had no other choice but to go to war. They didn't like it, but there was no other way. There was no alternative. They couldn't avoid it. So killing without authority is wrong. But Arjuna, in this case, he has the authority. He's being ordered by Krishna. Krishna is telling him that he should fight, right? So he's authorized. So his killing is authorized by Krishna himself. So there's no reaction for that. But any other kind of killing, any other kinds of violence, then that's very bad. So even tiny insects, a devotee will hesitate to kill them. He will want to avoid killing even small insects. We respect, we give res respect to all forms of life. Okay, number 20. Najayate mitriyate va kadichim naya niyam bhuvata bhavita vana bhuyaya ajo nitya sashvato yam purane purano na hanyate hanyamane sarire hanyamane sarire translation for the soul there is neither birth nor death at any time he has not come into being does not come into being and will not come into being he is unborn eternal ever existing and primeval he is not slain when the body is slain Purport. qualitatively the small atomic fragmental part of the supreme spirit is the is one with the supreme he undergoes no changes like the body. Sometimes the soul is called the steady or kutastha. kutastha. The body is subject to six kinds of transformation. It takes its birth from the womb of mother's body, remains for some time, grows, produces some effects, gradually dwindles, and at last vanishes into oblivion. The soul, however, does not go through such changes. The soul is not born, but because he takes on a material body, the body takes its birth. The soul does not take birth there, and the soul does and the soul does not die. Anything which has birth also has death. And because the soul has no birth, and he therefore has no past, present, or future, he is eternal, ever existing and primeval. That that uh, that is there is no trace in history of his coming into being. Under the impression of the body, we seek the history of birth, etc., of the soul. The soul does not at any time become old or the body does, as the body does. The so-called old man, therefore, feels himself to be in the same spirit as in his childhood or youth. The changes to the body do not affect the soul. The soul does not deteriorate like a tree, nor anything material. The soul has no byproduct either. The byproducts of the body, namely children, are also different individual souls. And owing to the body, they appear as children of a particular man. The body develops because of the soul's presence, but the soul has neither offshoots nor change. Therefore, the soul is free from six changes of the body. In the Katha, Katha Upanishad, we also find similar passage which reads, Najayati the meaning of this uh, and purport of this verse is the same as in the Bhagavad Gita. But here in this verse, there is one special word, vipaschit, which means learned or with knowledge the soul is full of knowledge or full of full always uh, or full always with consciousness therefore consciousness is a symptom of the soul even if one does not find the soul within the heart where he is situated one can still understand the presence of the soul simply by the presence of consciousness 
Sometimes we do not find the sun in the sky owing to the clouds or for some other reason, but the light of the sun is always there and we are convinced that it is there for daytime. As soon as there, it is, there is a little light in the sky, early in the morning, we can understand that the sun is in the sky. Similarly, since there is some consciousness in all bodies, whether man or animal, we can understand the presence of the soul. This consciousness of the soul is however different from the consciousness of the Supreme because the Supreme Consciousness is all knowledge, past, present and future. The consciousness of the individual soul is prone to be forgetful. When he is forgetful of his real nature, he obtains education and enlightenment from the superior lessons of Krishna. But Krishna is not, is not like the forgetful soul. If so, Krishna's teachings of Bhagavad Gita would be useless. There are two kinds of souls, namely minute particle soul, Anu Atma, and the super soul, Vibhu Atma. This is also confirmed in Katha Upanishad. Both the super soul, Paramatma, and the atomic soul, Jivatma, are situated on the same tree of the body within the same heart of the living being. And only one who has become free from all material desires as well as lamentations can, by the grace of the Supreme, understand the glories of the soul. Krishna is the fountainhead of the super soul also, as it will be disclosed in the following chapters. And Arjuna is the atomic soul, forgetful of his real nature. Therefore, he requires to be enlightened by Krishna or by his bona fide representative, the spiritual master. Okay, so an, imp an important verse, again describing the nature of the soul. For the soul, there's no birth and there's no death. So this is something very difficult for ordinary people to understand because we're only trained, we're only educated in material knowledge, material science. And when we come across this kind of statement, as it's given here in Bhagavad Gita, that no birth and no death doesn't come into being, <laughs> it's very hard for anybody to understand it because we try to understand it with our limited mind and senses. And the process to understand this kind of knowledge is simply by hearing. We have to hear. We have to hear and be reminded again and again. Just like when we get a bump on the head, we lose our memory. We forget everything. Sometimes, you know, I had some friends, that they were, he was in a bad accident and he was unconscious. And when he came around, the doctors were asking him, do you remember what happened? He said, no, I, I don't know what happened. Where am I? What is this? Where am I? didn't remember anything but doctors told him don't worry you'll get your memory back gradually it just takes a little while so gradually you know he was introduced this is your wife this is your children take him home this is your home gradually he got his memory back he began to understand so the same way we're like that we're conditioned we're thinking I'm the body, I'm an Indian, or I'm a Swiss, or I'm a European. We're thinking like that. We're identifying ourselves with the material body. But actually, we're not the body. We're all souls. And what about, where does the soul come from? Well, it's always existed. This is, again, very difficult for us to understand. What? It always existed? It doesn't take birth. Well, the body takes birth, but for the soul, that's eternal because it, it's spiritual energy. It's not of the material world. So the soul does not come into being and, and will not, it, it, the soul has not come into being, does not come into being and will not come into being. Past, present and future, you see, won't come into being. He's unborn ever existing, eternal, primeval. He is not slain. The body dies. 
but the soul never dies. We have to understand this. We simply have to hear this again and again and be reminded the nature of the soul. The body is going to die, but the soul never dies. And then the nature of that soul is described that he is, he's spiritual. He is actually full of bliss and knowledge eternally. Very different from the body. Body is temporary, full of misery and ignorant. But the soul is eternal, full of bliss and knowledge. And the soul does not age. Right? When people would ask Prabhupada, how old are you, Swamiji? He would say to them, I am the same age as you. And they would be surprised. He'd say, yes. He said, I am a soul and you are a soul. And our souls are eternal. So if you ask me how old I am, I'm the same age as you. I'm a soul and so are you. We're all souls. So we're hearing about the different changes the body goes through. The body takes birth, it grows, it, then it maintains, produces some byproducts, it dwindles and it dies six phases of the different objects of the material world. But the soul doesn't change, the soul doesn't grow, the soul doesn't die. None of this, this is only the body, a material body. Okay. Guru Maharaj, just a question. Yeah. What what about the karmas that or the the karmas the baggage that we have from a previous soul, uh, from a previous birth? So the soul carries that history with itself when it takes the birth in the new body. Well, you see, along with the soul, accompanying the soul to the new body is the subtle body. The subtle body, meaning the mind. Mm. The, the consciousness, the mind, intelligence, the ego, that's in the subtle body. So the subtle body accompanies the soul. When the body dies, the soul leaves the body and the subtle body goes with the soul. And that subtle body carries the karma, carries the desires which place us in the future body. So it's all there within our mind. You see, we don't remember the previous life, but Krishna remembers. You see, Krishna is also with us because Krishna is there as the super soul. And he also is coming with us, right? He's also with us birth after birth in the material world. And he remembers our desires. He remembers everything. Krishna is the witness and the overseer. <laughs> so we don't remember, you know, well, I don't remember doing all, oh, I don't remember I did that, but Krishna remembers and we get the reaction, the karma will be there, yeah. Thank you Guru Maharaj. Uh, Guru Maharaj? Yes? Uh, one question, uh, it is true that soul uh, does not remember everything. But there are many examples of people who remember previous uh, lives. My question, and uh, where is all the memory of Trug stored uh, in the soul? And how is it possible that we see with our eyes and hear with our ears? Uh, this information must be stored in the soul that is small uh, as an atom. Well, I'm, I'm explaining that uh, this information from the past, you know, as you say, some people, they do remember their past lives. Usually it's uh, small children. They can remember something, not all of them, but sometimes. And researchers have done a lot of 
uh, investigation and they've come up with a lot of evidence of young children remembering their past lives and a lot of proof of things you know they remember things and they have met, they have information which would not be possible and other unless it was actually them so that memory it comes with the subtle body with the mind rather than with the soul you see the soul the soul that carries mem memories of our spiritual nature the soul doesn't carry our material desires the soul's nature is to think of krishna and about our relationship with krishna in the spiritual world the soul can help us to remember about goloka vrindavan or vaikuntha and being with krishna and taking part in krishna's pastimes doing some service for Krishna so the soul will help us in that way but if our, if our soul is not so so helpful and then usually it's a mind the mind and the intelligence they will direct us a particular way what we should be doing what we need to do Yeah, the soul is this the, the super soul, Paramatma. He he also remembers. He accompanies us. Now another reason why we forget. They say that at the time of birth, the memories are taken away, because the birth experience itself is quite traumatic. It's quite painful. You know the child is when child is born you know it's quite a traumatic experience coming out from the in the from the womb of the mother and taking birth into the world it's quite a, a very powerful experience and at that time the memory of the past is taken away but the lord is there as paramatma he's there to remind us to remind us of our desires. Of course, we've all, we're already placed into another body by that time. We're placed into the body from the result of our past actions, we're put into another body. But that, then when we take birth, then usually we forget. The, we do see some examples in the scriptures, some rare personalities, they're given remembrance of their previous birth they're reminded just to help them to be careful not to not to make the same mistakes like, like there's an example there was one king who was a uh, renounced gone to the mountains but he got attached to a deer and when he died he became a deer in his next life so in the body of the deer he could remember how he'd been a great king and how he'd given up everything and how he'd been so foolish to get attached to an animal and because of his attachment to the animal he had to take birth as an animal for one birth so that was like a warning to him to be more careful so the next life he was much more careful after he gave up the animal body he, the next birth he took in a Brahmin's family and he was very careful not to make the same mistake again. Okay, thank you very much. So can we think even without a brain? Can we think without a brain? Yes. The brain, you see, the brain is a bit like the, the computer, but the thinking is done more with the mind. The mind is different from the brain, you see? The thinking, thinking is, you know, just like within the, what do we think about, you know, we have desires. We think, I want this, I would like that, I'd like to go there, I'd like to do this. You know, we think about these, we have different thoughts in the mind. They're in the mind, you see? 
and they're not in the brain. The brain is the process of uh, developing these different things. How are you going to do it? How are you going to go there? What are you going to do? And brain's functions are different from the mind. But within the mind, thinking is there. Okay. Thank you very much. Guru Maharaj, we are reading that we are not the body, we are the soul. But why is that uh, sometimes when we have some little bodily pain, our soul is also getting affected? Like uh, even we remind that we are not the body, soul like that. But still, why is the bodily inconveniences affect us so much? Yes, because we still identify with the body. Because we're not fully detached from the body. So we identify with the body, we identify with the, the pains and the pleasures of the body. It's, 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 it's one thing to know, we're not, I know I'm not the body, but we have not fully realized it. We've not fully understood it. We've not, you know, we're not a hundred percent convinced of this. <laughs> and we still have some attachment to the body naturally. Naturally, we have some attachment. We identify with the body. And so when we get sick, you know, we feel also some difficulty. We feel the pains and so on. And that, that affects our consciousness. The pain, the, disc, the trouble in the body affects our consciousness. Our consciousness will become down, will become depressed, will become disturbed by the illness, naturally, yeah. Why? Because, we, you know, we still have some kind of identification there with the body. It's very high level of yoga to be totally detached from the body, generally. We have to take care of the body. Although we're not the body, we're living in the body and we have to take care of it. We have to look after it and keep it healthy, keep it fit. And when it gets sick, then we have to, we have to understand something is wrong. We have to take care of it. We have to take medicine and so on. We have to see the doctor. And so it, it's, it's a very, very high level of yoga to be, you know, fully detached. But to some extent, you know, we understand I'm not the body. To some extent, maybe not 100%, and maybe we may not have fully realized it. But okay, I understand that. And we, we do our best, you know, get the body healthy again, get it working. Because we use the body in the service of Krishna. We need that body for Krishna's service. So it's important to us. That's why we take care of it. And when it gets sick, then our service is disturbed. And so naturally we feel disturbed also, that my service is being affected. I'm not able to serve Krishna as much as I like. So our consciousness will be disturbed. So you can see one good reason why we get disturbed when we get sick, because our service to Krishna is being affected. And naturally a devotee is very attached to his service to Krishna. When they can't do that, then they feel disturbed. Right? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Yes, sir. Okay. Will we read one more verse or will, will we? Yeah, good morning. We can read maybe one more verse. 2.21. Darima Mataji, do you want to read? Sure, I'll read it. 
वेदाविनाशनम नित्यम या एन जम अव्यायम कथम सा पुरुषा प्रथा कथम घत्यायति हंती काम ट्रांसलेशन ओ प्रथा O Partha, how can a person who knows that the soul is indestructible, eternal, unborn, and immutable kill anyone or cause anyone to kill? Purport, Shri Prabhupada ki jai. Okay. Everything has its proper utility, and a man who is situated in complete knowledge knows how and where to apply a thing for its proper utility. Similarly. violence also has its utility and how to apply violence rest with the person in knowledge although the justice of the peace awards capital punishment to a person condemned for murder the justice of peace cannot be blamed because he orders violence to another person according to the codes of justice in manu samhita the law book of for mankind it is supported that a murder, mur murderer should be condemned to death so that in his next life he will not have to suffer for the great sin he has committed therefore the king's punishment of hanging a murderer is actually beneficial similarly when krishna orders fighting it must be concluded that violence is for supreme justice and thus arjuna should follow the instruction knowing well that such violence commit, committed in the act of fighting for krishna is non violence at all because at any rate the man or rather the soul cannot be killed so for the administration of justice so called violence is permitted a surgical operation is not meant to kill the patient but to cure him therefore the fighting to be executed by arjuna at the instruction of krishna is with full knowledge so there is no possibility of sinful reaction okay So Arjuna was worried. One of the reasons why he didn't want to fight was he thought about the sinful reactions which would come upon him for fighting, because you know you're going to fight, you're going to wound people, you're maybe even going to kill people. So there's going to be re you get reactions for this. But we can see here Krishna is arguing that actually no, there'll be no reaction. Why? Because you're fighting. under the direction of krishna and krishna is giving the instruction krishna is saying to do this and that you have to do it he's fighting under uh, uh, he's acting under uh, authority so krishna is the supreme authority so prabhupad discusses about violence because you know people often argue or bhagavad the battle of kurukshetra is wrong that krishna's wrong he encouraged violence he encouraged killing this is very sinful krishna shouldn't have encouraged arjuna to fight and to kill people they could have saved the lives of so many people it was very wrong but shrila prabhupada is arguing that there's proper use of violence it's not that everything is uh, wrong that all violence is wrong there is proper use of violence and prabhupad gives the example here about the murderer how according to manu samhita a murderer should be hanged that's the proper treatment proper punishment for a murderer and so there is a proper use of violence uh sometimes sometimes the mother may also get violent with the child or may threaten her child mothers actually shouldn't get violent but sometimes may threaten that if you don't behave I'll get violent with you <laughs> right and so that some sometimes violence is necessary uh but the example was given that the person in the court he may sentence someone to hang to to be killed but he doesn't get any reactions for it he's simply the administrating the justice so in the same way a lord krishna by ordering arjuna to fight he was actually administrating the justice 
that it was only proper that there had to be this war, there had to be this killing of the sons of Dhritarashtra, they all had to be killed, all of these people, they all had to be killed. We'll see later on in the Bhagavad Gita, Bhishma also had to be killed, Drona also had to be killed, because they were all guilty. They had all been, they had all kept, they'd been offensive. They'd insulted Draupadi. They'd insulted uh, Draupadi by trying to disrobe her. And even Bhishma and Drona didn't try to stop them. And they should not have stood there and just witnessed these kind of things. So they're guilt, guilty also for this act of violence. So for, if you offend the, the devotees, Krishna cannot tolerate. He cannot tolerate injustice to his devotees. Therefore, Krishna is ordering this kind of violence. So this is proper use of violence. Okay. Any arguments about this? Guru Maharaj, if the murderer can become Krishna conscious, uh, if he give a chance to chant and everything, then uh, if he is not condemned to death immediately, then well, he might be. Yeah, he might be. We did have one man like that actually in Malaysia. There was one man, he, he was in jail and he was on a death sentence and he became a devotee and he was reprieved. He was reprieved, so he's still in jail. He's on a life sentence. Previously, he was supposed to be killed, but somehow Krishna saved him, maybe because he had become a devotee, I don't know. But, yeah, we do have people like that. It's happened. Yes, so, proper and improper use of violence, all right? Now, just like people were fighting wars, are these, are these, is this proper use of violence today when there are wars? Prabhupada said, no. He said, this is not proper use. Battle of Kurukshetra was Dharma Yud. But the wars today, they're not proper. You know, how they fight the, the, and the reasons why they fight is all based on politics and one person's greed over another. And so he said, actually, he said, you know, the Kshatriyas, when they fight, they get liberated. When they're killed on the battlefield, they get liberated or they go to heaven. But the people who are fighting in wars today, they go to hell. Both sides. So we should understand the difference between the war which took place there 5,000 years ago and what happens today. Okay. Any other question? No questions? We'll go on. Chen Hare Krishna. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Shri Advaita Gadatha, Shri Vaspade Gaur Bhakta Brinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, 
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna.